Hey, my honey, it's so today. It's the sledge of Anna for her 19th birthday, okay? Since we have been here with each other, my honeys, we have celebrated her birthday and did her sledge, okay? So we're starting off with, um, we have a closure. It's a four by four, and we bought the hair already blue, okay? The hair is a royal blue. When you are looking for laces in your commercial hair store, like basically, your uh, neighborhood hair store, make sure the lace matches you to the T. If not to the T, my honeys, make sure that it is at least close to your color. Because if you're light skinned and you go in there and just buy a dark tint lace, it's not going to work for you. It's going to show. So, the uh, length that we have is 22, 20, and 18. Okay, I bleached these knots. So, when I'm bleaching these knots on this blue hair, it's just turning it back blonde, okay? But I don't want the blue knots because they're dark, okay? So, I just bleached them just to give it a little neutral effect look, okay? And, um, I'm going to get her hairline together, my honeys, and I'm going to use my bed hair because, you know, that's what I have. You can also use the guys to be spray. And uh, I'm just going to get all her little hairs out my way, okay? I'm going to do the whole hairline, even though we're only working with a closure. But uh, I just like to get everything back out my way and then proceed with my style. So at this point, all you really got to do is her area where the lace will be, okay? So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. And I put that on there, and soon when I spray it, I just comb it back and have the client hold the blow dryer for me so therefore I can get it back as sleek as possible and no curly hairs will pop out and be in the way when I go to glue it down. So now my honeys, I am just taking that closure and I'm lining it where I will be placing it so that way I know how much glue to spread and how much cap to keep but since this is a pronto I will be gluing in her bundles I want to keep all of the cap but I want the area underneath that lace to be you know gelled down so I was just measuring out where I was exactly going to um, put my lace and have my cap to be you know seamless ball cap method Anywho, how have my honeys been doing? Yes, I miss y'all so much, okay? You would not believe that KJ has lost my battery packs to my camera. So, I found one, and I cannot find the other one. So, that's how I was even able to record Anna's sledge or whatever. But, you know, we was not going to miss that for the world. But, dang, it's like I could have been recording... And I haven't done anything to my hair or anything because I wanted to do it with my honeys. You know, if I can't do it with my honeys, I'm not going to do it all. So, I've just been throwing on my little wigs that I already have, my honeys, and calling it a day. But, I don't know if you guys have Instagram or if you're over on the Instagram. But, you know, I've been posting just little skippets of me putting a little wig on, a little dumb stuff. But I also brought it over to YouTube as well. So, I'm not going to leave my honeys out who don't have Instagram. But, like I said, you know, Instagram is a little more of the personal. So, if I go missing, my honeys, you guys can always come over there and I'm there, you know. But I always feel like when I come on youtube i have to bring it you know i have to come with something spectacular and bring it bring it so i am still my honey's getting in the groove with this whole influencer social media thing okay i have to be more consistent i have to be more engaging with my family you know so i'm i'm gonna do better like i i'm really gonna do better kj's two he's going on three so it's like a, a terrible moment right now for us because he's into everything. Like, I don't know what KJ got going on, but he's just into everything. I'm more busy with him than I am with anything else because, you know, I'm trying to raise a man. So, that too 
plays a big part in me being missing in action or whatever. I'm cutting off this cap, my honeys. If you don't need excess cap, excess lace, make sure you get rid of it, okay? It would just help for you to have a more seamless look. Because if you're trying to save it and then re-glue it down, especially if it's something that you just don't need, you could potentially be causing white areas, crusty areas, and stuff like that. So, I'm just cutting and eliminating all of what I don't need the excess. And it helps it to kind of just blend more in and look more natural. So, um, that's what I'm doing now. I use the darkest makeup that I have for my daughter because, you know, she's a little chocolate drop. And then I use my Ghost Bond. This layer is just to put that cap down. It's not even included in the layers that I would be putting my lace down. But you could add that layer. You really could. But the fact that I'm only doing it to put the cap down, I'm not spreading it out enough to lay the lace where it would need to be. You see what I'm saying? So when I do go in with the glue to actually lay that lace down, it's going to be uh, spread it wider than that. Okay. But that is still counted as some type of hole, alrighty? So, I'm now just taking the lace, seeing exactly where, you know, I need to lay my glue. So, I'm putting it in front of the cap, okay? You don't want to put it behind it because your cap would just show through the lace. If your cap is blended with your skin and you can get it to blend with that lace, it's not always a bad thing. But ideally, you just need that cap there to cover your hairline to protect it, my honeys. You not you don't really want down on your forehead and, you know, everywhere it's not supposed to be. So, with that being said, I just make sure to, to bring my frontals or closures below my cap. So, therefore, the cap is back there and you can't see it up in the front where I want my baby hairs and everything to look natural. So, as you can see, I'm cutting these little tabs off because when I go to swoop that baby hair down, I don't want it to swoop over the lump of that band that's on the lace, okay? And it's swooping over that lump would just not make it look natural. It would just make it look bulky and wiggy. So, I just eliminate that, cut that thing completely off. I part it, so therefore I'm not cutting off extra hairs. You don't want to waste any hairs, okay? So I part it directly on that thing and make sure no extra hairs, strands, whatever is in my way because I don't want to waste it. And my camera, as you can see, it has like this little halo around it or whatever. You know, I don't know much about cameras and all that. But towards the end of the video, I, I kind of peeped it. My honey's like, hold on, why is this? I thought my lens was broke. You know, when your lens break, it, it shows shadows and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, KJ, the mess my thing on thousand dollar camera up. I was just about to be livid. So then I thought about it like, hold on, because it wasn't focusing on stuff. And I said, let me go check. It wasn't on autofocus. It was on something completely different. Now, this would be cute, a cute frame, you know, for something else. Like, but it's not good for what I'm trying to do and show because it's not on autofocus. So it's focusing on everything. But what I'm trying to show my honeys, at least you still can get the point. But I end up fixing it towards the end and you will see how crisp the videos is or whatever. I'm just marking exactly where I would have been putting my lace. You don't want to over glue, okay? You don't want to put it too far down, too far up, too far anywhere. So, I'm just kind of measuring everything out. And I got my parameter of where I'm going to be putting my glue at. And I won't go outside those dots on the end, basically. That's what it barrels down to. I'm not going to go outside that. If I do, it'll be just a little tad because you want to distribute this glue, my honeys. You do not want your glue to be spread it thickly. You want a nice thin layer. A little bit goes a long way. Now, I probably got too much glue on there, for instance, okay? I'm going to spread everything from one end to the next, but I'm not going to touch every dot that I laid, okay? 
I'm going to use the excess that's already on the little tool that I'm using and kind of spread it throughout the hairline before I even touch them dots if I got too much, right? By the time you do that, something is already dried. Then I use the remainder dots, okay? And then I go in on them areas that has turned clear and use it for that. But I don't use a lot, a lot of glue because it will be clumpy. It takes longer to dry. It will be clumpy. And your lace will not be seamless. I'm taking my time with it because I don't want no lumps. And I don't want no... And that's what I noticed. Them lumps is what causes any detection of a lace. When you don't want any detection of a lace, my honey, you need to really spread that glue out. Don't use as much, okay? Let it turn clear before you add another coat. Because if it's not clear and then you add more... It's going to be lumpy too. If you put that glue on there, you see I'm just spreading it. I'm making sure to spread that glue flat. Nice flat layer. No lumps, no nothing. Now my last layer of glue, my honey, it may not be completely clear, okay? But at least there's no lumps anywhere that is defined white, okay? So if you got everything mostly clear, as you're spreading your glue down and everything is clearing out, but you see some areas that's stubborn and they're still white, spread that out. Get rid of that. It's a lump. You need to get that lump out of there before you go on to the next layer. Because that lump would never dry. It would sit there the whole time. But by the time you put that melt belt on and all of that, it's going to squeeze through the lace. And now you got a crunchy spot. So now you don't look seamless, natural, none of that. So uh, be mindful of that. And then also when I put my um, lace down... Uh, on the last layer it may not be completely clear but there's no bumps in there no lumps in there so it's not going to matter because you don't want it to be completely dry and then put the lace down guess what it's not going to stick so i like to let it have a little white tint to it but no lumps just period flat nothing else but a flat surface okay that's the whole thing to these laces and y'all know as y'all can see over time I am getting better and better with it and I'm going to share it with my honeys period. <laughs> So being that this is a closure pronto, my honeys, we are gluing everything down with the um, bonding glue, okay? It's the dollar glue, but I buy the big bottle of Wadiava so I don't be running out having to keep buying dollar ones. So I'm just going to show you how to put that glue around that band because that's all you're doing is gluing that band down and you don't want to go in too close to the lace because by the time you mesh it down then it will probably spread over to the lace and now you got glue on your actual hair of your closure or frontal so i'm trying to go along that edge as much as possible a thin layer nothing major because we're going to go in with the blow dryer and help it to dry quicker so you don't need a lot of um glue to do this process especially when you're going in with that uh, heat to kind of help it to dry quicker. When you're pulling that closure back, you see that I'm just trying to grab the most minimum hair that I can to help me and assist me to lay that down. Now you want to pull it tautly so you don't have any, you know, lumps throughout your lace and it can be just flat. But you don't want to pull it too much, my honeys, that once you get all the other tracks in, it's just pulling on that edge, okay? 
because if it's if it's too tight um eventually it will probably just pull on that edge and loosen up your lace or even pull out some hair so just lay it okay lay it to where it's nice and flat and also make sure you have it aligned properly with the front of the lace so when you lay it down okay you don't want to lay this side crooked over this way that side crooked make sure it's all aligned so it will be kind of better to just have that hair up in the ponytail out your way so you can see what you're doing <laughs> because it's just everywhere at this point and uh, I did have like a little lump somewhere that would have made my um, pronto looks, you know, not as flat. But I fixed it. I just went in with a little more glue and that lifted the area and then I laid it down. So um, some areas I didn't use enough glue and it wasn't stuck down. So I just kind of lifted all that hair up and made sure I glued down every area. So therefore it won't be going nowhere and shifting and moving. So don't pull it too tight because you don't want to pull away from the uh, front and uh, potentially pull out your hairs or even lift your lace you know from the tension and all Okay, I'm not going to go into details of the gluing process, but we start with our 22 inches, the longest bundle, because she wants to wear it long. Okay, my honey, if you're buying bundles to just cut it in a bob or however, then you would start with the shortest. Okay, so 18 inch, then 20, then 22. And then that's how you would go about laying um, those tracks down. So when you cut your bob, you know, it's all one length and you don't have short pieces anywhere but if you're just wearing it long then you know you will go ahead and start from longest to shortest so now i'm just cutting her lace i cut a bunch of sections throughout that closure so i can just hit section by section versus just going straight across like that and this helps me to actually see what i'm cutting okay that section will be completely cut it will be no extra lace anywhere and then when i move to the next section i just kind of you know proceed from where i left off and make sure to cut everything okay so once um everything is cut um i go in and kind of grab at the hairs just to see if anything is lifting if anything is lifting my honeys i will glue it back down if need be but if i don't need it i cut that off Okay, they say you want to cut it crooked and make crooked and all this and that. But wherever you laid that glue and wherever it stuck down at is exactly how you will cut it. So you don't want to have to cut it straight across or even be trying to think, oh, am I cutting it crooked enough? Wherever it's stuck at, that's what you cut. So whatever it did not stick, you may not need it. Just cut it on off because it's going to make it look more natural versus you trying to go back in and glue down anything that has not stuck because you could potentially have spots and glue spots and crusty spots and stuff like that if you could just absolute it and we ain't got to worry about it we ain't gonna let that bother us okay Thank you. 
now you guys know i've been rocking with my even lace tint okay this is the dark brown because she's chocolate okay so this blends with her perfectly but what i have noticed is that when i spray it down on the lace underneath before i even glue it down um that glue and that spray uh it don't mix together so it potentially messes up the natural look so I just spray it on after everything is done you seen how white that uh, lace was and then once I sprayed that on there it darkened that up really well so it, it doesn't matter whether I had sprayed it underneath or on top but if I sprayed it underneath my honeys I noticed that you know like when you got makeup on and you wiping it off and how it would turn or if you got makeup on and you doing your baby hairs and it, it mixes with the makeup and the edge control and it turns white and all of that that's kind of what it does when i spray it under the lace versus just spraying it on top so that's what i noticed over time my honeys and then i go in and dry it so i did two coats i'll say <laughs> okay so i don't know how that really goes if you would do two three four five coats of it but I spray one light layer and now I'm going in and I'm spraying again. I'm also going to dry that. Once I'm done spraying my honeys before I dry it, I go wipe off the excess that I got onto her forehead. Just with a paper towel or a little alcohol, it doesn't matter. But when you go to do the baby hairs, you don't want that color mixing with your baby hairs, okay? Making your baby hairs look ashy and all of that. So I wipe off the excess and... It's blended. Look at us. We're blended, my honey. So I used the back of that comb just in case it lifted up from it being wet because my glue is not a water protecting type of glue. So I'm using a comb as I dry to make sure everything is just down and seamless to her forehead so you don't see nothing but scalp. So I see a section is not actually laying down or glued down. I'm cutting it off. We don't need it. I thought I needed it, um, and now that I'm drying it and actually looking at it, I didn't need it. I took it right off, and it made that section look even more natural. You want that wet lace look? Cut off as much lace as possible. Anything that's extra, get rid of it. Don't try to just glue it down because it's lifted. If it's not affecting anything, just go ahead and cut it on off, and it will be a better install. Now, my honeys, I like doing it this way. It helps me to get the most seamless install okay for the frontals or the closures pulling out the hairs at the hairline now these are not necessarily the baby hairs these are just me pulling out a thin little layer of edge so therefore i could spray it and then put that melt belt on okay now i thought that they were doing this for baby hair sake or whatever and i'm just like i can do that later i don't need to do that but I've been doing this, my honeys. Look, I take my bed hair, or if you have the Gots to Be spray, either one, I take that and I spray it on there. Okay, my honeys. And then I take a little napkin, then I wipe off the excess because you don't want too much of that spray just sitting there if you don't need all of that. And then when you put that melt belt on and, to, and take it off, you're going to have a white, crunchy lace. So wipe off the excess, okay? And then put that band on there okay let that band dry that spray takes seconds to dry actually especially once you use the assistance of a blow dryer so i stretch that band as far as i can and then lay it okay have her hold it because it will be sliding until you tie it so once we tied it and everything we blow dried it just to make sure it was completely dry omg okay once you take it off you already see the what lace look but you got a bunch of crunchy hairs over that lace <laughs> It's easier to go in and kind of comb out those crunchy hairs from that spray versus not letting your glue dry and then putting that melt belt on over the lace while you got wet glue because now your hair is stuck to the glue. So it's not going to be easy to just pluck that hair out like that. Hey Kels gang, and welcome to another YouTube channel. She got me looking like thing one right now, but she about to look like thing two after I'm done with it. But back to the routine, we get it in, we count this money, and yeah, check us out. 
<laughs> Bye. Come on. I'm putting that in there. No, you're not. My lips was just way too crusty. I don't know why my honey, she be trying to do little sneaky stuff on the camera like I'm not going to add it in, but <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it was her birthday. She was so excited, my honeys. I was excited to do this blue on her. And I do want to mention that when I bleached that frontal, I washed that frontal out with the uh, purple shampoo. Okay, I think it's Shimmer Lights. And it stripped some of the color out of the frontal. Well, closure rather. And look how it's lighter than the actual bundles, right? So be mindful of that. That shampoo is a lightener, okay? It will lighten up a color in a heartbeat. So if you had a, uh, let's say, a black, a, a number one hair, and you put you use that shampoo for it, it will lift it to like a 1B, you know? Sometimes maybe even a 2, depending on the hair and the chemicals and all that. But it's a lifter, so... I should have never did that, and I did. So now I got to share that with my honey so you would know. If you don't want to mess up your colors and stuff. See, we didn't have to go and get a 613 and dye this. We were blessed to be able to find it, that color, because this is the color she's been wanting for months. She knew she wanted this color for her birthday sometime last year, okay? So basically, um... If, if I would have let it sit for 15 minutes and did all that, you can only imagine, okay, how much color would have stripped out of it. But it all came together. We're not letting that bother us. By the time we put some sheen to it and this and that, it darkened it back up and it matched, okay? So you can't tell, but that's just a disclaimer that I'm letting my honeys know about that dang old shampoo. Use a regular mild shampoo when it comes to that. Anywho. Um, we are going on. You see me do these little baby hairs or whatever. They were pretty quick. It's only a closure. This is why I love working with closures. And I'm going in with my She Is Bomb stick. And I'm about to go ahead and flatten everything out. This part here, my honey, you know I have multiple videos. And it's the same routine. I know you watch these type videos probably every day if you're interested in this type of stuff. So you know how to go. And... I'm going to zoom through it, but that She Is Bomb wax stick is the bomb, but you can use any wax stick, you know, you can use any type of, any type of, like, heavy oil, okay, you don't want it too heavy, and you don't want to distribute it throughout the whole hair, just on that root, because these uh, closures and frontals are very stubborn, okay, you could use some water, some mousse, but this way with the heat is just quicker, you got to wait till the mousse dry, and da 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 so you put that heat to it, it's just like, bop, you're done, <laughs> you know. So we did her a swerve part. We didn't do it straight back. We kind of curved it. And then, my honeys, what I didn't do in this video was take some of that lace tint and spray it on her part. You see how her part is still kind of white. So I did all that afterwards, aftermath. But when I did do that, it did not stain the hair, okay. It did not bother the hair. I was able to actually wipe it right off the hair. And my lace just stayed that color. So keep that in mind as well when it comes to lace tints. They don't stain the hair or anything. As you can see with the front. I sprayed it in the front. It did not stain it. So that's a plus. Okay. I'm picking up my lace hair and a track that's right behind it and i'm blending that together so that way when the wind blow you don't have your lace hair just blowing everywhere but your track hair is still laying so everything is together and then that um she is bomb stick the wax stick is already helping for that hair to stick together as well and i didn't add any extra okay it's already pretty much laid so you don't have to add any more um wax to it to help with this process because you put you parted sections and did this so it's enough wax in there for <laughs> that whole little process that i'm doing
And look at my baby, little 420 baby or whatever. What did y'all do for 420? Leave me a comment because I know everybody named mama celebrates it or whatever. And she just think it's such a dang on privilege to be born on 420. But I just can't believe she is already 19. Like she's a young lady. That blue compliments her skin well, okay? She was scared at first. You know, it's a process. Like, you go from an ugly stage to the cute stage. But she was scared, thinking, oh, it doesn't look right on me. Oh, my God. Either way, girl, we wasn't taking it out. But when you working with Kales, honey, we're going to make anything look good. So, we weren't even letting that bother us or whatever. But she had a nice birthday, I guess. She left me 
and KJ. So we don't even know what she had going on. But she's 19 at this point. It wasn't for me to be trying to be all in her business and all. But I give you a little leeway now. But I ain't going to give you too much. But anywho, that hair was gorgeous. I don't even know the name of the hair, who the company is. I don't know anything about it. We got this hair from the hair store up the street from our house. So we didn't order it or anything like that. We just bought it. The hair stores is getting better, my honeys, with closures and frontals and wigs, okay? Because they know that at this point they had to step their game up because we gonna go online and order something and get something 10 times better or maybe something fake you know what i'm saying so they know right now this is hitting it's, it's money it's money so they better get it together and this definitely was some good hair that um was not a lot of shedding from that hair that was just whatever hair i cut from the lace plucked from the lace and all that still in that brush so um here it is my honeys um what's today Today is the 23rd, so I'm three days late posting this video. Her lace still looks good, okay? These techniques in this video that I use is like everything now. Like, I'm, I'm learning a lot more than what I knew, and her lace still looks good, and she's like in love because all she got to do is take her bonnet off and go. But at this point of the video, my honeys, I will see my honeys on the next one. Uh, 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 the next. Uh, 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 uh. Bye guys, love you guys. Mm -hmm.